What's up everybody, my name is Sawyer Hartman and today we're gonna to be doing a low light mobile camera comparison video here in beautiful downtown Honolulu. I've got the brand new Oppo Find X5 Pro that was co-developed by Hasselblad. It's apparently a low light photography powerhouse so we figured we'd bring it out tonight and test it out for ourselves. I've got my lovely Strat on the camera, you can wave hello, and my beautiful fiance, Anjali Cooper, who's going to be our model. It's a beautiful night. It's gonna rain, possibly, but like, how incredible is this backdrop? That's Strat, that's who I was talking about. Strat and my fiance. How cool is that? Here, babe, walk over here, sir. Oh, over there, close to the edge. Oh my God, that is so smooth, it's ridiculous. Look at this. What the heck, dude? It's got five axis in-camera stabilization. I just, yeah, it does. All right, low light, that's why we're here. We're doing low light, sorry, my bad. <laughs> Back to what we're shooting. So first, a huge thank you to Oppo for sponsoring this video and actually getting this device in my hand. I'm not even quite sure that this device is available in America yet. As soon as I found out that a mobile device was coming out that could shoot 20-bit dynamic range and color, I knew I literally had to get my hands on this thing. So tonight, we're not only gonna be testing out the Oppo Find X5 Pro, we're actually gonna be testing it against two other flagship phones that other users might have to see where this compares one of which being the iPhone 13 Pro Max, and the other being a Samsung, Samsung S22 Plus. I had to buy this for this video because I've, I've never used this before. So the Oppo Find X5 Pro is actually pretty beastly when it comes to camera hardware and the lenses that it has on board. So on the back, it actually has three lenses, a 50 megapixel f1.7 wide angle lens that's powered by the Marisilicone X NPU, or the neural processing unit, making a whopping 20-bit color with SLR level five axis optical image stabilization. The second camera is another 50 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide angle lens and a 13 megapixel f2.4 telephoto lens. So even the front facing camera is 32 megapixels, but we're not really gonna be focusing on that tonight. I don't remember this, so I'm gonna have to read it. The inside processing is actually powered by a Qualcomm 8 generation one chipset, a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, and a 6.7 inch, 1 billion color, 120 hertz display. So. Uh, a billion, I didn't even know there were that many colors. So regardless, I have pretty high hopes. So let's go shoot with it and actually see what it can capture. How cool is this light? Show them that. I'm sitting on steps right now and it looks like I'm in a professional studio. All right, check out this shot. So we just left getting food and uh, I just snapped a quick photo to just test the camera at night. I'm gonna retake one more so you know I didn't do anything fancy with it, but ready, three, two, one. We've got an iPhone Pro Plus. This is the Samsung. Wow. Oh my God. Look at that. The Oppo by far has the best color and let the most light it. The iPhone is a pretty neutral, nice looking photo and the Samsung just fell apart. All right, now I'm feeling pretty confident. So right now we are on the search for a rooftop here in town. So I've called in a favor and our buddy is gonna let us break into his apartment. Nice. All right, we found a cool, little light here it's not much but it could be really moody as you can tell it is dark as heck out here tonight like it is pitch black so um, anytime you can find any kind of cool lighting source that looks moody and things i'm gonna be giving tips and tricks this entire night so that's something i look for oh so this is the building that really really tall one my buddy got us access to the roof we hope so hopefully they let us in hello we're meeting Kevin's son on the 42nd floor. Oh wait, that's an awesome photo. Thank you very much. No problem, you guys have a best night. Yeah. It, it worked. I'm excited, I'm so to see what it looks like. Okay, this is awesome. Wow. So, this is what we were looking for. This is incredible, baby. Can I get you to come stand right here? Yeah. I've got the Oppo Find X5 Pro here. Go stand on that little pad. That's incredible. Three, two. Can you face this photo? This is a Samsung S22. This is an iPhone 13 Pro Max. 
All right, come here, look at the difference. Uh, it's pretty hard to show this up here in the dark. It's not even comparable. Leave a comment below which you think wins. This is the Oppo Find X5 Pro. This is the Samsung S22 Plus, and this is the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Some long names, man, to remember. I actually just found this by accident, but so go stand there. I can change the f-stop in video mode to 1.4 and motion track her face. This is video on the Oppo Find X5 Pro at night. That is nuts, but like that, I don't even know what you'd be comparing it with. It doesn't look like a phone. So in all honesty, it looks better than the R5. We're using like a $4,500 setup right now. Maybe a little bit more. I don't know, am I crazy or did that actually look better? Uh, yeah, yeah, we've now added in a professional level camera to this comparison because like, I don't know what else to compare it to. All right, let's go right over here. How cool is this? What I'm doing right now is trying to get a shot that reminds me of old film. I'm using that by using the natural light of the building here. So I'm trying to use the natural light of the sign to kind of edge light the back of her hair. The challenge of this shot is actually getting the dynamic range right. Here are images from the Find X5 Pro, the iPhone 13 Pro Max, and the Samsung S22 Plus. With the uh, Oppo Find X5 Pro, not only are the lights from the sign properly exposed, but like you still have light and shadows on her face, where on the iPhone, it just flattens out the face completely. There's no depth, I'd call it. Um, models like this one. I'm really impressed by that. I really want to find that neon light sign in the window to get one of those really cool Instagram type shots, put this thing to test and see how it handles bright colors. All right, so we have come back to the beach. This is the lowest possible light you could find. We're gonna walk right out there onto the sand and it's literally pitch black and see if any of these phones can capture anything. Come on down, babe. So we'll give this a go. Why don't you stand right here? Because it's so low light, um, every phone is pretty much gonna be taking a longer exposure. So this is gonna be how steady can I hold myself. That's the real test. Yeah. Okay, ready? The Apple's having a really hard time with this setup. And I think the Oppo has the most true to life color. And by far it's just letting in 100% more light than the other images. How interesting. Yeah, they're actually all, I'm really impressed with all of them. Well, look also at the water. Oh. So on the Samsung, it froze the water in place. And on the Find X5, it smoothed it out, which is nice. And that the like Apple, <laughs> the Apple didn't know what to do. That's the cool thing about these photo missions is like, in all honesty, oh, it's starting to rain. In all honesty, like, we're out here shooting and trying stuff, but we really don't know what we're gonna capture until we find it. And after seven long hours of filming, this is the part of the night where my microphone died. Of course, we didn't know that until we got home, so now you're getting my lovely voice back in the studio. So the last couple shots that we were looking for was one, to try to utilize the portrait mode. And honestly, we were really impressed by how it looked. Not only was it able to reproduce the bokeh blurry, beautiful background you expect from a DSLR, but it actually knew the depth of the subject so that above her head where you see here was not blurred as well. This is a telltale sign that you are actually getting depth tracking and that the camera's not just blurring everything that is not your subject. Now, the final shot that I was looking for was finding a neon sign in a window because this is somewhere that most mobile devices always fall apart. So as you can see on both the iPhone and the Samsung images, there are hot spots on her face. This is notorious with mobile devices. A lot of times the camera can't really process what's going on and the camera will create these little bright hot spots on the face that look really unprofessional. Now on the Oppo Find X5 Pro, we actually didn't have this issue. It was really nice to see that the color reproduction and also color value was able to hold across the face. Now, this pretty much concludes the majority of our comparison throughout the video, but what I'd like to do now is show you on screen as I'm talking. These are all the images that we were actually able to capture throughout the night on the Find X5 Pro. I think by seeing these firsthand, it'll give you a better idea of the actual capabilities of the camera. And honestly, we were really impressed, not just by the 
low light capabilities that we were testing, but all of the photo and video capabilities of this device were far superior than we had seen on anything before. And that pretty much concludes our extensive review walking around downtown Honolulu for over seven and a half hours. If you had a preferred device, please let us know down in the comments which images resonated with you the most. And if you're interested for yourself, feel free to follow Oppo's social media accounts and check out their new flagship phone, the Find X5 Pro. The link will be right down below. But other than that, that is it from me. This is actually the final video that we are shooting in this studio. Next week, we're right back to the travel vlogs as we start packing all of this up and getting ready for our move to Florida. I'll see you guys next week. Wish us luck.